let's make a simple climbing system for Unreal Engine. So I can just go up to this wall, and now I'm climbing this wall. I can climb up, down, left, right, all that kind of stuff. Obviously, you would include uh, climbing animations with this, but I can also like climb up this cylinder, and I turn around uh, with how I climb. You can climb around a surface as well. So you can pretty much climb however and wherever you want with one small limitation that I do want to warn you about, and that is going over the exact up direction or the exact down direction on a cylinder like this is a little bit janky uh, because of the way that we have this uh, setup. If you go across world up, you're going to turn around and uh, it works kind of fine but it's it's kind of weird uh the way that it works if you necessarily need a climbing system uh that supports you going upside down uh when you cross over this threshold uh the math for that is so much more involved and uh complex to actually make that work compared to how we're going to set things up here and this is a like threshold that you actually probably never have to go over actively I decided it's worth keeping it a little bit more simple and having this one tiny limitation to the climbing system. Aside from that, everything will work fine. So with that said, let's go into a empty project and reconstruct this from scratch. And there will be a download link below in the description for patrons and YouTube members, as always, to download the finished project files. So essentially, all that we're going to do is going to happen inside of our player character. I'm using the third-person character here. You can, of course, use whatever uh, you have in your own project. And the very first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to add just a debug uh, key for like C. Obviously, you would put this on actual key with an input action in your own game. And we'll make a climbing Boolean variable. And whenever we press the C key, what we're going to do is we're just going to set that climbing variable to the opposite of what it is now. So we do that by getting the climbing variable and getting a not boolean, and that just sets it to whatever value it is currently not. Quite as simple as that. Then, based on whether or not we will be climbing at that time, we're going to get our character movement component, and we will set the movement mode to either being uh, flying, which is what we're going to be using for moving around as a climbing actor, or we're going to set it back to uh, either walking or falling. It's kind of the same. I prefer falling because it also uh, works fairly well with uh, things like ledge grabbing mechanics, which we're not going to go over in this video, but I have a different video uh, on ledge grabbing. So this is how you connect all that up. And now we have a toggle key that lets us go back and forth between climbing and not climbing. Now that we have that, we can go up into our input action for moving, uh, whatever you have set up for that. And there we're also going to check, hey, are we climbing? So putting in a branch there. And if we're not climbing, we'll just uh, use the pre-existing, pre-made uh, movement input here. If we are climbing, we're going to uh, pretty much make our own entire uh, custom implementation of how we should be moving. You can use add movement inputs. Uh, I personally that it's a little iffy with the way that we're going to set it up to use those. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to be setting the position of our character directly. That does potentially sometimes cause potential for bugginess, being able to clip through certain walls and that kind of stuff, where the movement uh, system, if you were to use that, would more so take care of that. With the movement uh, input system, I find that you get detached from walls really quickly and really easily. And you need to like then go back in and set the location of your actor like explicitly anyway. So we might as well just skip this movement input stuff. So what we're going to do is if we are climbing, uh, we'll just put this other uh, stuff here on the right hand side. We will do a line trace by channel. And this is going to start and end at certain positions. And we're going to need to uh, add a couple of things together to get these starting and ending locations. The starting location, of course, is going to get started from the uh, get actor location, because we're going to trace from our actor location. But to that, we're actually going to add a little bit of stuff, because we're not actually going to be tracing from our uh, player actor itself. What we're going to do is we're going to offset 
the start and end location in the direction that we're pressing our inputs in. That way it's going to do a trace to see, hey, the location that you want to move to, is that a location that we can move to? And if so, we're going to just update your location to that new position. So to our actual location, we're going to be adding uh, a get actor op vector, uh, but we need to multiply this with a couple of things first. So let's multiply this and uh, put that into this addition node. We're going to be adding one more thing to this in a moment, but one step at a time. We'll change this into being a float and we will multiply this by the y value of our movement input. And this works, but it's not frame rate uh, independent yet. Now, if the frame rate is higher, we will be moving faster. So to combat that, we will add one more multiplication to this. And we will also be multiplying this with get world delta seconds, which we multiply by the movement speed that we want to be moving while climbing. So I'm going to set this to about 250. If you want to move faster, you obviously increase this to a higher number. You might want to make this a variable or whatever. And this is uh, going to be added to that. And we're going to need to do something pretty similar uh, for the left and right vector. So let's uh, do that. We effectively just like copy this entire thing over. But instead of doing the up vector, we get actor right vector and put it in there. And then we're going to be multiplying this with the x value from our input instead of the y value. And we also add that to there. And that will be the starting location. So it's going to be our actor's position offset in its local right and up directions by wherever you want to be moving to. That will be the starting location. And then we take that same number and we're going to be adding something to it to get the ending location. And what we'll add to it will be the get actor forward vector which we once again will multiply by a number. And this is just kind of the uh, snapping sensitivity of your climbing system. This is how far in front you're going to be checking. So I like to do this at about like 250, maybe like 170 or so units. Uh, don't make this too long, but also don't make it too short. If you want to see uh, how it works, you can set your uh, trace debug type to being uh, for duration or persistence, and it will actually uh, show you these line traces every frame that you print them out. First and foremost, we're going to be checking whether or not we are hitting anything at all, because if we're not hitting anything, uh, we just kind of don't want to do anything, uh, because that means that we're trying to climb to a position that isn't available. So we're just trying to climb into like the air or something like that. So we don't want to do that. If we do find a hit result though, uh, we want to break our out hits, and we're going to be doing a, a little bit of math with this. Fairly simply, though. We will be setting the actor location and rotation. First up, the location is actually pretty simple. What we do is we get the location uh, of our line trace impact, and we add to that the line trace normal multiplied by a offset. So... What this is going to do is it's going to put us at the location that the line trace hits and then offset us in the direction of whatever direction that bit of geometry is facing into the world. So depending on your character, this might need to be a different number as well. I will change it into a float. I'm going to go with about 30 units. Fine tune this a little bit based on your character and your animations, obviously. And that's going to be the location that we set this to. Now, the rotation is also going to be fairly similar. Uh, we just take the normal and we multiply it by a float value. So right click, change it to a float, and we're going to multiply it by negative one. So what ends up happening is if we're climbing, let's say this area over here, and we have this line trace, right? The normal of what we hit will be the direction that this geometry is facing in the world. So that's away from it. We obviously don't want our character to be facing away from whatever it's climbing. So if we invert that normal, it will be facing the other way around. So it will be facing toward whatever face we just hit. Multiplying that normal by negative one will do for you. And uh, you can very easily just put that into the new rotation. It gets your rotation X vector uh, by default. And that's kind of everything we need to do there. 
Oh, and don't forget to uh, hook up your uh, character movement components to the set movement mode. Uh, I forgot to do that as well, apparently. Uh, and that should be the uh, basic setup. So now we can go up to a wall, we can press the C key, and we can see that we start moving around like this. When we press the C key again, we start falling down. If I go into modeling mode real quick and I add in a uh, cylinder into the world here, set the radius to be a little bit bigger, uh, the radial slices, let's set that to be like 32. You're going to see a couple of issues pop up still that we're going to be fixing here in a moment. Uh, but largely, this should now function fairly well. So we can uh, go to the side and you can see that it's kind of like snapping every time it goes across a uh, new face of this thing. And it's kind of like jittery and it's not just generally that smooth. So the way that we can uh, fairly easily fix that is going back in here. Instead of just setting the rotation directly like we are now, uh, we'll make a little bit of room here. Uh, we will get a R interp 2 and we'll get actor rotation. And then we will interpolate to whatever our ideal rotation will be. Uh, for that, we need to get world delta seconds again and we need to give it an interp speed. I find that about 10 is a pretty good speed here. And that should smooth out all the uh, rotational stuff. And it will still be a little weird uh, because we technically uh, still have some character of movement stuff going on. So what you wanna do is in your input action for move uh, on canceled and also on completed, you want to stop movement immediately. So we just hook both cancel and complete it. Complete is a more important one, but if for some reason uh, your movement gets canceled, you also want to uh, stop moving, of course. And now you will see that we have pretty much what you would expect to be. Um, his leg is moving a little weirdly because of his like character rig. Uh, that's just a matter of he's a little too close to this thing. Again, if you have like proper animations set up for this, uh, that shouldn't be an issue to begin with. Obviously, I don't have a climbing animation ready for you here. Uh, but you can see just setting it a little further away uh, kind of fixes that good enough. And now it's relatively smooth uh, going around as well. And even if I copy over this thing and make it um, lay down on its side, you will see that I can still uh, climb up on it. And it works just as you would more or less expected to. And we still have this issue with uh, passing over the top, but because we're using the R interp, uh, it goes relatively smoothly. So that's the basic setup for a climbing system in Unreal Engine. You can of course do a lot of stuff uh, to expand on this, to make sure that you can cross over uh, that little area up here. You can make your entire like own custom movement mode for this. If you like want to get real deep into the weeds about it, maybe one day when the mover plugin that is currently in development at Epic Games uh, has been released and is a little bit more production ready, I will revisit this and we'll make like a proper movement mode inside of that to support uh, climbing, which might work a little bit better in more scenarios. But this should cover you mostly in about 99% of scenarios, I would imagine. So if you want to support the channel and get these project files, of course, again, Patreon and YouTube member links down below. And I will see you back with uh, whatever we do next. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And a huge thank you to my Cave Big Brain tier supporters, which care more for coding than Impulse Control, Earl Monserville Erno, my Cave Student tier supporters, Oiku, and my Cave Digger tier supporters, Mauricio Farias.